to share on some of the very important things that God has laid in my heart. Uh, I want to share on readiness for revival. Readiness for revival. We talk about revival and sometimes people think revival is that evening meeting when you met and you had a good moment of praise. It's good, it's revival, but it could be leading to revival. Now, revival itself, it, it is that the seed for revival is God. And whenever people have vast for God, extraordinary vast for God, that cannot stop on ordinary, but can only stop on extraordinary, vast for God. God, not in the religious ecclesiastical experience, but God in real, real experience, which is above all those things. You know, I've come to discover all people in the world, all the regions, they are waiting for revival. I, I, I tell you, I've been preaching in crusades, and I... And whenever God start manifesting himself in his power, in his capacity, I see people from all religions, Muslims, Buddhists, whatever, coming for prayer, coming for prayer. You know, you know, I remember one time I was in a meeting, or there was this Muslim girl who, who thronged into a meeting and said, Bishop, hurry up. Come, come and raise my sister. She's dying. The girl didn't care that I'm a Christian and she's a Muslim. The issue, you know, the issue did not rise there. But she said, Bishop, you know, the truth about Christ being the Messiah. Oh, time comes. Uh, a level, a certain level comes when Christ remains alone as the only hope and the anointed one of God. You know, I just walked out the house, went into that house where they had gathered, and I found the girl virtually dead. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to rise up. And the girl rose up. No one can resist. No one can withstand the proof of true God. When it comes to his signs, his unique signs, his unique miracles, his level of move, his level of operation. And whenever the church or an individual has a strong vast for God, let me say this first. If there's anything that is disturbing me in my life, you know, we who are involved in leadership of the church at higher levels, you are whatever. One thing that disturbs us is how now uh, people, it, it's good to have an, a church, a Christistical order. We, we are good at that. We plan things well. We plan things very well. But above all that, above all the orders, organizational structures, and all these things, let me tell you, the greatest resource in the church is not the primary resource, is not money. The primary resource are people who are revived, people who have met God. Uh, you know, uh, uh, there was a day I was preaching from the Hebrews chapter 11 about the heroes of faith. And I was saying, people, this is the conclusion we made. That we, reach a, we reach a point whereby I tell you, friends, and, I, I, and this is what I'm yearning for in our church and also in your church, whereby a bishop, a pastor, a leveled church administrator, beside all the structures and engagement, there is this unique sign that I can be anything for God. That is one thing. Number two, I can do anything for God. And number three, I can endure anything for God. I hope you have noticed the three. It's a conclusion I made from Hebrews 11 about the heroes of faith. Heroes of faith. There was this, uh, they start with, with Abel, Abraham, Jacob, uh, Amma, 
uh, Moses, apostles, all these people, and a dub. I, I, I represent, yes, this man could be anything for God, could do anything for God, and could endure anything for God. And I want to speak to you, my friend, if you are built according to the scriptures in the book of Ephesians, the Bible says, uh, we, are, we are the church is a vessel where God will demonstrate his mysteries. Where God you prove his name. Where God will also show us uh, his greatness. That is, sorry, Ephesians. Now, if you see, if you read the book of Ephesians, it talks about church being a vessel of demonstrating the secret, the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom. You go through it, go through it. And one of the things that you need to understand is it talks about the foundation of the church the foundation of the church if you go to chapter 2 uh-huh the bible says uh for, let's start from from verse 6 and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in christ that in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness to us, us in Christ Jesus. And then the Bible proceeds to saying, verse 10, uh -huh. For we are, we are, uh, no, verse 19, let's go to verse 19. Now therefore, you are no longer strangers, and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the house of God having been built on the foundation of apostles and prophets Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into holy temple of the Lord in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit now listen carefully my friend the issue of revival Rev let's have the understanding of God the church that Christ has established is the church with a definition with the dimensions, the church built on Messiah, the anointed one. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, we don't sit back. You know the problem that, you know, we don't sit back and just assume that the gates of hell will not prevail. The issue of gates of hell not prevailing, it is a declaration of the aspect of warfare in the church aspect of warfare the church will march on and when christ says the gates of hell will not prevail against us he means we will demonstrate that aspect in our work and our ministry and our warfare that as we continue in business as we continue in worship there is a unique mark in brothers and sisters. There is a unique mark in our projects. There is a unique mark in our families. There is a unique mark in our prayer prayers. There is a unique mark in church church missions. That there is something unique about the church that Christ talked about. The gates of hell is not prevailing against it. Whenever we reach out, we overcome. If Gates of hell are not prevailing against us. We means we are advancing towards the gates of hell. And gates of hell are giving in. It is something practical. It's a demonstration of the resurrection of Christ. And therefore, one of the things we need to have in our minds is, is that Jesus, who rose from the dead and who is seated at the right hand, heart of God the Father, 
which the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse, 20, verse 21, far above all principality and power <clears throat> and might and dominion, far above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come, that Jesus, who is seated far above all principalities, there is, revival is what? It's my desire to see Jesus, who is exalted after overcoming death, demonstrated in the ministry. The, the kind of gospel, and therefore, that will lead the church into having a deep thirst. Whenever I've been preaching, and revival breaks, it starts with few people who join together, or maybe a person with a very deep thirst for God, thirst in this manner, not for God to meet some needs aloud, but for God to be seen, to be known, and to be demonstrated. What is that? If you go to uh, the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18, you see the desire that uh, uh, Elijah had for revival. Let's go there, please, by God's grace. That is 1 Kings, chapter 18. And one thing, as this man of God faced King Ahab, he expressed some words. Yes, let's go there by God's grace. And that's chapter 18. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, that is chapter 18, and let's read several, several, uh, several uh, verses. Verse 21, And Elijah came to all people and said, How long will you fatter, will you wave our fatter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. This is a desire to clear issues. One of the things that the church needs to do today is to clear this issue. It's as if our God is becoming, is being treated to be like a God among God. It's as if Christian, Christian work and Christian mission, Christian we are being treated as a, 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 a religion among other religions with equal characteristics and whatever, and aspects. Whereas, if you check the Bible, now if you are out for revival, this should be the cry. We want the Jehovah God to be the only God, sovereign, exalted, and the only hope. So that so that the word of God will be viewed. When I am exalted above all men, above, I will draw all men unto me. Christ did not say uh, he will draw some men and he will leave other people to other places. He said, I'm the only way, the truth, and life. And when I'm exalted, I will draw all men unto myself. There is no space that men should go to another one. And therefore, if we are going to bring revival, it is Jesus be exalted so powerfully and so gloriously that there will be no other option. Christ will remain truly the only hope, not by just leading the scriptures, but people seeing that aspect demonstrated openly. He say, exude me powerfully, and I'll make all men come to me. Christ will not draw all men to himself if he is not exalted the way he wants. Let me say this, anytime Christ demonstrate his glory, and we Christians allow it to happen, we see thousands and thousands coming to Christ. People forget their religious. People forget their affiliations. People forget their desires. And they all throng to Christ, saying, we know you are the only hope. What they have known, whenever revival comes around, you don't need a lot of follow-up. 
People are convinced about Christ. And therefore, this issue where Elijah said, now, I want to prove Jehovah is the only God. And when Elijah was praying uh, and God answered by fire, if you go to verse 36, it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel. You are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things by your word. To me, to me, what is remaining now? If there's anything I'm going to do in the church as a bishop, this is what is remaining. We've done a lot of structures and whatever, but all people who are following in the church and all over, it's good that the church has good system, but ultimately they are looking for God. And God, revival that is going to break, it will start with one unique sign. And I know one, that's for God. In which level? I want my God to be known. Because God cannot be known unless he is demonstrated. He, or he demonstrate his real strength. You see, and that's why now Elijah said, let all people who believe in idol gods and the prophets come to the mountain. And then the God I serve demonstrate himself. And the Bible says something. When Elijah was praying, if you check First Kings chapter 18, verse 37, the Bible says, hear me, O Lord, Hear me, that these people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Verse that it says, the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and it leaked up the water and that was in the trench. Now when all people saw, let's check verse 39. Say, when all people saw it, we want to bring the whole nation to a place where we will say when all people, all, it doesn't matter which religion, but they have to see the uniqueness of the God we serve, friends. We have to raise the church be above the normal Sunday service, the normal order, the normal whatever, and we get to a unique service. This is a service. This is a worship service that was unique. Elijah was going for, if Jehovah is God, let him now be known. If Baal is God, let him now be known. And that's why this man say, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, O Lord, that these people may know that you are the Lord God. And God answered by fire. It destroyed the stones, the sacrifice, it licked the water. And after that, when all people saw it, we need to get to the gospel where, where that says, when all people people saw it. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to see God for this. When we will stand in the altar, in the road, in the crossroads, in the street, and somebody will write now, not now they're writing now, when all people saw it. That is what is remaining. We don't have to keep on arguing now. We need to go to a place where we will say, now God answer me, answer me now. That these people will know you are the only God in Israel and they will leave their selfish ways and they will stop argument and melt before you. That's what the church ought to want. 
We are so many people. You go to meetings. People are making church like it's like a debate, a place where you sit and debate and argue, strive. And can you imagine now? People are striving for leadership. People are striving for some recognition. But I, I, I need the anointing, the star of Elijah. Elijah was not striving for that. He said, answer me, O Lord, answer me, O Lord, that these people you know, you are the only God in Israel. If I'm to be known, I'll be known not as a bishop, but as his servant. It's not the title. It's not the issue of general overseer, you know, superintendent. You know, this man says, when they know that you are the only God, they also know I'm your servant. And they also know whatever I'm doing, I was sent by your word. That's the allegement of the church. God be known. His servants be confirmed. And their mission be accepted. This is the level of glory that we are going for. Let me say this. And, 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 let me say something here. I pray. Because revival is coming. I pray that no one will be destroyed. Because, you know, the other day, I had a very deep desire of knowing something in our country. There's a revival that broke somewhere. It was so powerful. So powerful. And it had remarkable signs. People used to come from America, from India, just to attend a meeting on Sunday. I was told whenever meetings would be held, and it, it was in early and late 70s, you would have traffic jam in Nairobi. People from Arabic nation, from coast, people from Pakistan, there will be traffic jam. People rushing to a crochet where God is answering prayer. And I tell you, and, and I asked something. What happened? What happened? To, what happened? And I met one of the key people, key elders who were there. He said, you know, Bishop, there are some people who joked around with the move of God. And he said, within three months, six pastors who were there died. Died, died, died. He said, why? Why? That's just a strange, you know, you know, you know, in this revelation, when God answered by fire, the false prophets were destroyed. They could not survive. They could not survive. I pray that people will stop being self-centered and surrender to the move of God. Because uh, there are times when God comes too close that the only thing you can do is to fear him. And there is no space for otherwise. You know, it's like, like the way God walked with Israel in the wilderness. You know, God was so close, just right there. Moses would, lie, would just raise his face and hear God from the, from the crowd. Peter of fire, God was right there. And you can imagine people trying to misbehave just in the eyes of God. You know, God would just destroy, destroy, destroy. And I, and I pray. Because God is coming to be so closer now and walk with the men of God, women of God who have vast for God, God to be seen. I pray that church elders, church bishops, church leaders, some people who are just used to God, you know, you are used to the altar, you are used to, please not when God has come. When God has come, his presence is there. We can only bow to him, fall before him, and melt before him, and be used of God. That's what we can do. We can't be otherwise. Because, you know, there are times when God moves, and somebody says, no, we want to defend ourselves. We don't want to melt before God. We want to defend our status. God does not know any status. When God comes, he has only one status, 
God and his glory. And that's why we need to understand God wants to release his sign. One, I want to visit this session and say this. You know, I woke up this morning and tried to think about the church. I, I spent four hours, almost five hours, praying and thinking about the church. And I said, God, and I could, I, I could think about the, the whole country, the whole world, people who are in the streets, people who watch us on the TV, people who watch our preaching in the YouTube, people who gather in the church, like in our church, we have four services. We, are, we can even have five services now. What are these people looking for? They are looking not for Bishop Gatimu, but for God. And if they are to recognize me, it's because of God. If they are to recognize this church, it's because of God. And that's why uh, the, I, just say, I, just, I just said, God, answer me with the fire. So that these people will know you are the only God in Israel. And number two, I am your servant. So my identity, I'm, I'm being respected because of being the servant of that great God. I cannot be myself before the church. I can only be as the servant of God who is proving his name. Pastors, bishop, people who come to the church are not coming because of you. They are coming because they trust you are the priest and the prophet of that God. And they are still waiting when God will use you. To demonstrate his kindness and his healing power. They are there with cancer. Trusting God, use the servant of God. They are there with broken marriages. They are there with the revelation. We're still waiting. When will God use our bishop? When will God use our pastor to release a revelation? We have preached the Bible very well. The Bible now should be translated from written word to living word you know you can i i can preach about but miles i can preach about that woman who attacked the government of christ i can preach about peter and john walking through the beautiful gate and that lame man healed but people are still saying it happened then can god now use our pastor the way he used, used peter can god use our bishop the way he used john because we still need God. Listen, we are built on that foundation of apostles and prophets. That is our foundation. Can that foundation be quickened now? I'm saying there is, there is need for great revival. Personally, and the Lord told me there's no other answer now. The answer is revival. I want to appear to this nation I want to appear to the church, churches. I want to appear to bishops and those councils. We want to see a church board, a church council that meet and fall before God. Not to argue, but fall before God. I want to see that, that board of the church committee. You meet and discuss about how can we make God see now. That should be a major item in the agenda. And may God help us, friends. We still will continue with this teaching about revival. Vast for God. So deep that the vast is not just for small elementary items. But we want God to be proved. And to be seen. And to be recognized. We want Jehovah to arise and his enemies be scattered. We want God to dethrone the small, small thrones around that are. We want God to demonstrate himself who he is. That people around will come from divination, from lies, false prophets, and know the true God is here. God of Elijah, answer me now, answer me now, that these people will know you are the only God in Israel. You are the only God in America, only God in South Africa, only God in Kenya. And they will know we are your servants. Answer us now. That is our cry. That should be the cry now in your heart. 
We are not out for fame. We are out for God. If I'm to be known, I'll be known as his servant. His servant. I'll be known because I was there to call him and he answered. That's what God wants. That's revival. God bless you. God keep you. Amen.